Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are continuing on with the AP Calculus 2012 free response questions. And now we've moved on to the non-calculator part uh, for with question three. So let's start. Um, let f be a continuous function defined on negative uh, four to three, consisting of three line segments and a semicircle centered in the origin and let g be given by this. Find the values of g of 2 and g of negative 2. So g of 2, I just plug into this, right? g of 2, 1 to 2, f of t dt. So it's the area from 1, it's the integral of f of t, which is from 1 to 2, 1 to 2, this, this here, OK? And that integral would be this area right here, right? Um, yeah, OK. All right, so we know that the slope of this, let's see, goes over two drops. One is 1 half. So it goes over 1. This is like, no, we dropped. I go over two drops 1, so it goes down 1 half. So this is minus 1 half right here, the y value. So this is the area of a triangle. This triangle, the base here is 1. This height here is 1 half. So this area is 1 fourth. And because it's under the x-axis, this area would be negative 1 fourth. OK? Now g of negative 2 is the integral from 1 to negative 2 of f of t dt. So this is kind of like I'm doing the integral from 1 to negative 2. So it's sort of like if you could did it from negative 2 to 1 and then inverted it. Right, so let's do this. Let's just find the areas, and then we'll figure out what the sign is. The area of this triangle. This is a width of one and a height of uh, three. Right, so this area here is uh, uh, three halves. This area here, um, because it's a semicircle, it's a circle with radius one. A full circle would be pi r squared, which would just be pi, because the radius is one. So half a circle is half a pi. Now, when we're integrating from 1 to negative 2, it kind of flips signs because we're, we're going from right to left instead of left to right. So this ends up being positive area, and this ends up being negative area. So that equals pi over 2 minus 3 halves. Okay. For each of g prime of negative 3 and g double prime of negative find the value or state it does not exist so at negative 3 uh, 1 2 3 I'm here okay so for b g prime of negative 3 is just simply the slope here and the slope is this line this line slope let's see it goes over 2 and up 2 so it has a slope of 1 right let me see, over 2, up 2, yep. And then the second derivative, well, so the derivative of this is a constant, right? It's it's 1, so the derivative of that is 0, right? Because this is a straight line, the derivative of a straight line is a constant, and then, der then the second derivative, which would be the derivative of that constant, would be 0. Find the x, now see, find the x-coordinate of each point at which the graph g has a horizontal tangent line. For each of these points, determine whether g oh my bad um, I actually messed that up I did I did F um, I don't know why I was thinking I had a graph of F um, so g prime of negative 3 it's the derivative of this so the derivative of this is um, so g, let's just first compute g prime of X g prime of X is um, by fundamental theorem of calculus, it's simply equal to f of x, right? So g prime of negative 3 would equal f of negative 3. f of negative 3 looks like it's uh, 2. OK, now g double prime of negative 3 would be the derivative at, of f at negative 3, and that would equal 1. OK, so that's, that's better. Let's do C over here. Oh, let me change the ink. I've been noticing that before. I kept messing up the ink color. And it wasn't kind of like the same as that one over there. 
Not that it is quite exactly the same. I guess I can't pick a color that's quite the same. That's kind of annoying. Oh, I, I'm sure I have to pay extra to get... Oh, no, let me see. I got more colors here. Um, no, none of them really match. So we'll just stick with that. Um, let's see. Uh, find the x-coordinate at each point where the graph of G has a horizontal tangent line. Horizontal tangent line, which would mean G prime of x equals 0, right? And we just found that g prime of x is f of x, so that's f of x is 0. Okay. And then we got to determine whether it's a relative min, max, or neither. Okay, so when is f of x equal to 0 or undefined, right? Doesn't mean or undefined. So when is f of x 0? Oh, f of x is defined everywhere, so that's not important. So f of x when it's zero is at, um, um, what is this, negative one, and then at one, and that's it, okay? Now at those points, f of x, or g prime of x, is going from positive to negative. So by the first derivative test, that means the slopes are positive to the left and negative to the right. This is a relative max. And x equals 1, you see the slopes stay negative the whole time. They stay negative because it's below the x-axis. So f is negative here, and the f is negative here by being below the x-axis. But And that's the same as g prime being negative. So the slopes of g are negative here and here, so it doesn't change sign. So that means kind of like it looks like this. Like the slopes are negative. It hits 0 right at x equals 1, and it continues being negative. So this is neither. And you, your, your explanation would be that, like, um, um, that the, the, you know, the slopes don't change signs, so it's neither. Okay, D, for between negative four and three, find all values for x where the graph of g is a point of inflection. Point of inflections are where the concavity changes. Concavity can change when the second derivative is equal to zero. Those are candidates, right? Those are my critical numbers. So that's the same as f prime of x is equal to 0, right? Because g prime of x equals f of x. Um, f double prime of x equals 0. Or f, sorry, derivative of x equals 0 or undefined. So when does that happen? That ha Our candidates are x equals negative 2. Um, so when, because it's undefined there. Right here, x equals 0, because the derivative of f would be 0 there. And then at x equals 1, because the the derivative is undefined there. Anywhere else? Oh, derivative is really undefined at negative 1 also. If you kind of see that, it's kind of like a little jagged thing. Like, And that what that means is the slope from the left side and the slope from the right side aren't the same. Okay, so that's good. So let's take a look at which one of these could be points of inflection. Um, we, we need to know when the concavity changes. So that means the second derivative has to go from negative to positive or positive to negative. So at negative 2, see the, 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 the second derivative of g, which is the derivative of f, goes from positive to negative. So this changes sign. So this is 1. Um, at this point, um, the slopes are negative and it stays negative here. So this is not 1. Uh, that's x equals negative 1. At this point, x equals 0, the slope goes from negative, the slope goes from being from positive. So again, that's a change in sign. And here, slope goes from positive, the slope goes to negative. That is also a change in sign. Okay, so I think that wraps up that question. So let's take a look at um, the solutions. Negative 1 fourth, pi over 2 minus 3 halves. That one I got negative 1 fourth, pi over 2 minus 3 halves. Good. 2 and 1, 2 and 1. For C, got tangent lines at negative 1 and 1. So relative max there, it's neither there. And then the graph of G has a point of inflection at negative 2, 0, and positive 1 because G double prime changes sign at each of those values. So, all right. I hope you guys learned something from that one. Um, yeah, and I will see you in the next free response question. 
Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.